sacrifices to God's altar. Leviticus chapter 17 and verses 1 to 9. The commentator Matthew Henry said, well, he says, This statute obliged all the people of Israel to bring all their sacrifices to God's altar to be offered there. When God approached or men sought to approach God uh, in the early days before God formed the nation of Israel, uh, they would offer a sacrifice, a family sacrifice. And so Job did for his family. Abraham did for his family. Isaac did. Jacob did. But when Israel became a people, a multitude, and God brought them out of the wilderness, or what, out of Egypt into the wilderness, God's plan was to make them a consolidated witness for God. In other words, God organized His witness. And today, the witness of God is organized in the local church. And the Lord speaks to His people and said to them, that they are to come together and they are to offer sacrifices unto the Lord. Of course, at their liberty, uh, when they were given, uh, there was no uh, tabernacle that was set up. The people uh, did offering, they offered to many other gods. They offered to the gods of their own heart, the gods of their own desire, their own whim, their own fancy. But here the Lord is saying to His people that they are to offer to the Lord God of Israel, the God who has instructed them through the ten plagues that brought them out of Egypt, that they may be His blessed children and after he brought them out so that he would be they would be separated unto him from the idols that were in Egypt then God instituted the Levitical system of sacrifice whereby we have taken much time in the book of Exodus in the book of Leviticus to learn and to seek the Lord and the Lord has shown us and the Lord has taught us by His mercy, by His grace, uh, the way by which we can approach Him. Not any other how. Uh, we don't uh, set up ourselves uh, to be our own uh, leader uh, and uh, at the end, uh, it gender a lot of strife, uh, disrupts the peace amongst God's people. But the people of God who seek the Lord follow the system by which God has put in place by His mercy, by His grace. The Lord uh, organized His people. And so what did the Lord say to His people? Just one thought for us today. Forget not the Lord. Matthew Henry said, well, he says, The Israelites themselves had learned in Egypt to sacrifice to demons, sacrifice to idols, sacrifice to other gods. That's to sacrifice to demons. And this here is given to us and read to us so that we may learn, we may know, and the God of Israel put it so clear to them. And some of them, it should seem, practice it even since the God of Israel had so gloriously appeared for them and with them and they their audacity increases by the day their audacity increased by the day well uh, the Lord said no I don't okay. they said they are said to go a whoring after these demons for it was such a breach of their covenant with God as adultery is of the marriage 
covenant and they were strongly addicted to their idolo idolatrous worship self-worship right? worship of these idols uh, easy and it can get into a man's head and he can get lost in himself and therefore uh, it is of the Lord's mercy and will that he stipulated this law that the people of God the people of Israel are uh, to come to offer sacrifices unto the Lord at the tabernacle verse 1 of our law uh, text says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, and unto all the children of Israel, and say unto them, This is the thing that the Lord hath commanded, saying, What man soever there be of the house of Israel that killeth ox, lamb in the camp, or killeth it out of the camp, and bring it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer an offering unto the tabernacle of the Lord. Blood shall be imputed upon that man, he shall sh has shed blood and that man shall be cut off from among his people how is it that uh, the law is so severe that when they found an animal and they kill it for themselves they kill it uh, instead of offering it at the door of the tabernacle God is so severe upon them well because they by their act right, forgot the God of Israel and the Lord is saying to us let us let us not forget the Lord. Let us understand His laws and let us follow Him according to His ways. And the Lord sought that His people would bring these peace offerings with Him. Right? Why did the Lord sought the people to bring these peace offerings to Him? So that they will not go a whoring after other gods. And it's interesting that, you know, uh, when we talk about uh, being uh, close to the Lord and yet far away, the Lord provided three analogies during uh, the time of his uh, sojourn upon earth. He gave the example of the lost sheep. The lost sheep was lost in the wilderness and the shepherd has to go and pick up because the sheep was hurt and the shepherd has to go out there to bring the sheep back. And there is also Jesus gave the story of the lost coin. The coin was lost in the house, so near yet so far away. And the lost son, the son was lost, went away, would not come back. But the Lord turned him and he understood, he learned the lesson. Right? And he came back and said, my father's house, let me come back to my father's house. And so here, as we think about God and His statute here in gathering His people so that they will not forget to offer sacrifices to Him, they would not forget Him and what He had done for them. You see, the nation of Israel was built, created by God in order that they uh, uh, may express to the world the way by which God can be approached, the way by which God can be uh, 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 appropriated for themselves. And what is the way by which God can be appropriated? It is by the sacrifice. And so in the wilderness, as Matthew Henry wisely observed, he says, perhaps not many animals. So if they find an animal and instead of sacrificing to God, they just you know, use it for themselves, ah, that's not good. So the Lord says right, that yes, when you uh, uh, have an offering, uh, offer it to the Lord. Right? Why? Because uh, it is to remember uh, what He had done for us, that He is the one that is not only right, uh, giving us uh, life, uh, but sustaining life. You see, we don't oftentimes realize uh, in our in the in the uh, wellness of our body that you know life is so precious and life is so fragile and the Lord wants us to know how fragile 
life is, and if we think of it in a final analysis, how terrible it is, how fragile life is. Today we are here, right? Tomorrow, you know, we, we can be, we can uh, 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 not have life. And so, you know, when every day when we are given life, the Lord says to us, do not forget. Do not forget what the source of life, right? how you have been graciously, mercifully uh, uh, sustained and not consumed. And all of us must think uh, that, you know, we don't owe the Lord. Uh, uh, in the sense that the, the Lord don't owe us. Uh, but the Lord has been merciful and gracious. Uh, and we who have received and receive abundantly of the Lord, uh, we must not... Uh, get tired, uh, we must not become scornful, uh, we must not uh, 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 become, you know, uh, once we have, uh, in a sense, uh, experienced the grace, take it for granted. That was the history of the people of Israel after they entered the land. It is like this, you have received grace, but you think that this grace is offered to us right, without, uh, without restraint and therefore, you know, we lose our own restraint. Ah, the more when God's grace is offered to us, the more uh, we joy with trembling. The Lord says that we, all the more we need to realize right, we live by the mercy of God. And therefore, the Lord is saying to us, let us not uh, forget Him. Let us remember His grace toward us. So, verse 4 of our text, or verse 5 of our text says, To the end that the children of Israel may <clears throat> bring their sacrifices which they offer in the open field, even that they may bring them unto the Lord, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto, unto the priest, and offer them for peace offerings unto the Lord. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar and the door of the tabernacle and burn the fat of the several savour unto the Lord. And there shall no more, they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them, through their generations, and thou shalt say unto them, Whatsoever men there be of the house of Israel, of the strangers which sojourn among you, that offereth a burnt offering or sacrifice, and shall bring it not unto the not unto the offered at one place, then well the Lord uh, the door of the congregation to offer it unto the Lord, even that men shall be cut off from among the people. Now, the Lord says to us, uh, as Matthew Henry observed well, idolatrous sacrifices were looked upon not only as adultery, but as murder. He that offered them as if he slew a man. Wow, how serious it is uh, when we uh, do not offer to God our whole heart. Uh, that is not, not good. And therefore, he ordered uh, that Sacrifices would be at one place, right? Uh, in the Levitical system, it is like this, right? That sacrifices be made and offered to God according to the rule of God, right? So today, the Lord uh, provides for us the way out, right? Through the sacrifice of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord is saying to us that let us not forget what He had done and Therefore, let us not secure our own altars, right? but rather secure the altar as of the Lord. And so, as we, as God's people, uh, we are uh, exhorted uh, in the New Testament principle given in Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, 
as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another much, so much more as ye see the day approaching. Well, the Lord is coming again, and the Lord has provided for His church uh, uh, assembly of His people together, and the Lord is saying to us that we are to gather ourselves together and uh, worship Him and offer our sacrifices to Him and loved Him and served Him and walked with Him and the Lord, uh, the Lord surely uh, will bless His people. The Lord surely will uh, keep them. The Lord surely will preserve them. The Lord surely uh, will uh, prosper them. Why is that so? Because this is the statute of the Lord. And we are to follow it forever. And so we thank the Lord that He has provided for us to be able to come uh, every Lord's Day for worship. On the Wednesday night, we can come together for prayer meeting. And the Lord provided for us uh, Bible studies whereby the people of God may be gathered together to be instructed in the things of God, in the Word of God, so that our mind will be attuned and focused upon the Lord and his ways and that our hearts will be fully attuned to receive and appropriate the fullness of his grace so how is the soul of the christian uh, to be uh, it is to be full of life right? the lord is because the lord has offered by his himself the sacrifice for our sins and therefore, if we have been uh, uh, gloriously, we have been uh, saved uh, at such a great price, then let us not make light of the grace that is bestowed upon us. Let us uh, receive it with much thanksgiving. Receive it with much uh, gratitude as of the Lord for the Lord is good uh, his mercy endureth forever and the Lord seeks that his people would uh, bless his name and would sacrifice at his altar may the Lord prepare us every Lord's Day right, before you come for worship Saturday you look forward prepare yourself right, you prepare your life uh, not just on Sunday, but you know, your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is there. That's where you prepare yourself. How do you prepare yourself? Well, by living a life that is pleasing to the Lord. So that when you come to the Lord on the Lord's day and sacrifice before Him, wow, it is such a wonderful uh, 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 sacrifice because you have prepared your heart and you have prepared yourself and you come uh, prepared to the house of the Lord to thank Him for His grace, for His mercy, for His goodness. And so we thank the Lord and we praise Him uh, for His mercy, for His grace, uh, for providing a place of Bible study for us. Well, let us not take for granted and let us uh, 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 appropriate the goodness of God by His mercy and His grace. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank Thee for Thy mercy and grace. Thank Thee and ask that Thou would uh, bless Thy truth, Thy word into our heart. Help us, Lord, that we may be doers of Thy word and not hearers only. This I pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.